There are a lot of misconceptions about melatonin as a supplement. Based on the research, melatonin is an incredibly powerful hormone that's not only crucial for sleep quality but also for longevity. I've been taking melatonin on and off for many years, but I decided to take melatonin every night for three months and see what happens. So this is what I want to share with you in this video. I also have blood work comparing my before and after results. So you definitely want to watch the full video. If you're new here, then my name is Seem Lund and I'm interested in living longer and staying healthier. If you want to learn more about these topics, then make sure you click the like and subscribe. First, let's talk about my results with sleep. Many people think melatonin supplements help with sleep. Indeed, there are many studies showing that melatonin supplementation before bed reduces time it takes to fall asleep and get slightly more total sleep. My total sleep duration and sleep scores didn't change when I was taking melatonin and when I wasn't. I was getting about 7-8 to eight hours of sleep every night and based on my sleep tracker, I was getting a score of 100 on about 90% of the nights. My deep sleep and REM sleep also stayed relatively the same. My bedtimes and wake-up times were also consistent. So my sleep barely changed at all when I was taking melatonin and when I wasn't. I did feel that I was able to fall asleep slightly faster, but yeah, it was you know impossible to quantify exactly you know how much it took me to fall asleep. But what do the studies say about this? A 2021 review of 23 studies among people with sleep disorders found that melatonin decreased sleep disturbances while increasing total sleep time and quality. But I don't have any sleep problems and I sleep fine without melatonin. And this is also not the biggest thing that I'm interested in when it comes to melatonin. It's actually one of the least interesting things. Melatonin as a hormone is also one of the most powerful antioxidants your body has. Melatonin regulates glutathione, which is called the master antioxidant. But glutathione is actually controlled by melatonin, making it the true king of antioxidants. Unfortunately, melatonin levels do decrease significantly after puberty. Elderly people produce significantly less melatonin than teenagers. And even 20 or 30 year olds make a lot less melatonin. So the real reason I'm interested in taking a microdose of melatonin before bed is to fill this gap between how much melatonin my body produces with age and how much I would produce if I were younger. Because the melatonin production decreases with age. And the older you get, the bigger the gap becomes. Of course, I'm still very young and I'm not in need of taking melatonin to fill the gap. But I'm still producing significantly less melatonin than I did 10 years ago. If I was in my 40s or 50s, I would be pretty much taking melatonin every night to fill the gap. So how much did I take? I took 0.3 milligrams on most nights and on some nights I took 1 milligram. Your body in adulthood makes about 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams per night. But when you're a teenager, it's up to 1 milligram. So for me, a dose of 0.3 milligrams is perfect. But if I was in my 40s or 50s, I would go a bit higher, like 0.5, maybe up to 1 milligram per night. I did notice that I slept better when I took the 0.3 milligram dose than when I took the 1 milligram dose. Maybe that's because my body is making already enough melatonin and taking too much is not good. I do think that there's a lot of individual differences between how much melatonin is good for someone and how much will give them negative side effects. For me, I found the most effective dose was 0.3 milligrams per night. I actually experimented with different types of melatonin. My wife was a chronic migraineur all her life, so she got a prescription for pharmaceutical melatonin from her doctor. The advantage with pharma melatonin is that you're getting exactly the amount of melatonin as the label says. There's a lot of problems with over-the-counter melatonin supplements. As studies have found, they may contain up to 470% more melatonin than the label says. Now that isn't nearly as bad as you might think. Let's say the label says 1 milligram of melatonin per dose and you end up getting 470% more. Well, that's only 4.7 milligrams. And there have been no negative side effects observed in people taking this kind of doses. In fact, a 2020 meta-analysis of clinical trials on melatonin at doses over 10 mg a day have shown that it lowers inflammation. So even at doses over 10 mg a day, melatonin has been found to have no negative side effects. The second melatonin I used was a plant melatonin called herbatonin. There are studies showing that herbatonin has a 950% higher antioxidant potential compared to synthetic melatonin. I didn't notice a lot of difference between using pharma melatonin and herbatonin. At a dose of 0.3 milligrams, I slept the same. But I did notice that my sleep quality was slightly worse when I took a larger dose of the pharma melatonin. So for example, at a dose of 1 milligram of the pharma melatonin, I did get some of like grogginess and I might have waken up a few times per night. But even if I took herbatonin at a dose of 3 milligrams a day, I experienced none of these side effects. So as long as you're getting the dose right, which you have to kind of find out what's the right dose for you, then it doesn't really matter which type of melatonin you take, in my opinion, and in my experience. The problem is that most regular melatonin brands don't actually have the exact dose as the label says. 
What about my blood work? I did happen to do blood work before the experiment and right before the end of the experiment. So I did a melatonin experiment for three months and I got blood work around the 2.5 month mark. As a disclaimer, I didn't do the blood work to specifically track my effects from melatonin and I didn't control for all the other variables. There's many other things that could have affected my results. So it's, you know, just not a perfect experiment by any means. But it is still something interesting for me at least. So here are some of the main differences in my blood work. My fasting blood sugar before was 91.3 milligrams per deciliter and after it was 89.9 milligrams per deciliter. That's a pretty insignificant difference. However, my hemoglobin A1c, which refers to the average blood sugar level over the past few weeks, went from 5.2% to 5%, which is a great improvement. My LDL cholesterol went from 98 milligrams per deciliter to 93 milligrams per deciliter and my HDL cholesterol increased from 54 milligrams to 62 milligrams per deciliter, which is also an improvement. My inflammation levels, as measured by HSCRP, stayed the same at 0.2 milligrams per liter. That's already pretty much as low as you can go with it. Again, it's not a perfect experiment by any means. There's many other variables that could have affected these results, but I didn't change my diet, I didn't change my exercise, and I didn't change my sleep. And my blood work does fit with some of the results from clinical trials on melatonin supplementation. Supplementing with melatonin has been seen to improve cardiometabolic risk factors such as blood sugar, blood pressure, lipids and endothelial function. One more important topic to clarify is the idea that taking melatonin as a supplement is going to suppress your natural production of melatonin. There's really no evidence for that. In fact, there's evidence to suggest that is not the case. Even doses of up to 50 milligrams a day haven't been seen to affect melatonin production or change the circadian rhythm of melatonin. After I stopped taking melatonin after those three months, I noticed no difficulties falling asleep, I noticed no differences in my sleep quality, in my sleep scores, and there was no differences. I didn't feel any psychological dependence either. That's because melatonin doesn't work in a negative feedback loop like many other hormones. If you inject testosterone or raise it high with testosterone replacement therapy, then it does suppress natural testosterone production. However, melatonin is regulated by more than the feedback loop between the brain and testicles. Melatonin is produced depending on the circadian rhythms, which are regulated predominantly by the day and night cycles and light cues. Melatonin is suppressed during the daytime and when you're exposed to bright lights and it gets produced in darkness. That's why melatonin is also called the hormone of darkness. So taking melatonin as a supplement isn't going to affect your natural melatonin production, because natural melatonin production depends on the light cues. The next question is, should I take melatonin? Well, like I said, if I was in my 40s and 50s, then I would take it every day, because my body would produce much less melatonin as it does now. And I would probably do it at a dose of 0.5 to 1 milligram, whereas now 0.3 works best for me. That's because the elderly people see a significant decrease in melatonin production and a significant decrease in deep sleep duration. The older you get, the shorter your sleep. The worse quality it is, the less deep sleep you get and the less you recover. That's because of the decrease in melatonin as well as the deterioration of the circadian clocks. Even beyond sleep, the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits from melatonin are worth it for the elderly. That's because antioxidant defense goes down with age, glutathione levels go down with age, and melatonin can provide the antioxidant defense or reduce the inflammation that increases with aging, called inflammaging. So my idea behind melatonin supplementation is to just fill the gap between how much melatonin my body makes and what's optimal. The exact amount you need depends greatly on the person and their goals. My personal experience with melatonin has shown that there are really no negative side effects to taking a smaller dose of melatonin every night. Even doses up to 10 milligrams in research haven't been found to have negative side effects. If you want to know what supplements I take every day, then check out my free supplement list. You can find the link in the description or head over to www.seamnon.co forward slash supplement dash list. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.